have a happy landing. A very familiar sound here at Toastmasters. In fact, you might say it is the hallmark of our organization. But by a show of hands, how many have experienced this on an airplane? Anyone? Rajiv, tell me about it. Unmute. Happy landing, uh, am I right? Clapping on an airplane. Have you experienced that? You said yes. Yes, I have. Um, I can tell you once I was um, uh, in the plane and uh, we were halfway through and uh, one of the engines stopped. Ooh. And they had to stop the air conditioner as well because they didn't want to overburden the other engine. And uh, there was turbulence, so they decided to take the plane back to where it started. And finally we landed and we were all clapping. Absolutely. This, I have experienced this many times, usually on international flights. It's because the pilot executed some smooth flying moves and landed the plane expertly, especially if there had been turbulence. Mr. MC, fellow Toastmasters and friends, we may not all be experts yet in finding our funny. We can, however, explore ways together to have our stories, anecdotes, and jokes land well, and what to do when they don't. The late distinguished Toastmaster Carl Ryder wrote and taught on bomb-proof humor. I ask you, can such a thing really exist? How does one achieve such loftiness and loquaciousness so that liquid gold just pours from their lips whenever they speak? Well, when you find out, please come tell me. The experts have said it before, establish a humor file. Up until now, mine existed in my head, swirling around as I tried to ascertain if enough time had passed for me to trot out those funny but embarrassing jokes and stories. Dig into your humor file. Use stories from your own experiences. Use those which ties your message together. That happened to be funny. Uber important. Know your audience. Things that may be amusing to you and your circle of friends might be puzzling or worse, offensive to others, especially if they come from another part of the country or world. Your story should be relatable to most, but accept the fact that not everyone will get all of your jokes and references every time. Now, what do you do when you're not connecting? I like the tactics that the old stand-up comedians used to do, like tapping on a microphone and saying, is this thing on? Or bopping it on their heads while saying, is anybody home? These always got a laugh or a chuckle. Starting an old joke such as, Three men walked into a bar, or there was a priest, a rabbi, and a preacher, and stop, change gears, and continue on with your good stuff. Now, this is a favorite of mine. It's what televangelists and charismatic preachers often do. After delivering a rousing piece of their sermon and not getting the amens and hallelujahs that they were expecting, they walk to the other side of the pulpit, stare pointedly at the people and say, let me talk to some folk over here that seem to be awake. Gets a chuckle, brings the congregation or audience back to the message. Voila, connected. Now, what should you do 
if you obviously have laid an egg. What do you do then? Well, comedians have this going for them. They will, they have four options. They get mad or sad and blame the audience. They keep delivering as though nothing happened. They deliver material that is different from what that has been bombing or they try to work the crowd. Now, what can we do? Ignore it and move on. Awkward, make fun of it. Be like, well, this is funny last week when I told it. Give the audience a deadpan look and say, forget about it. In other words, minimize the awkwardness as humorously as possible. How do, you, how do you forge on when your mind goes blank? You've forgotten your speech or your punchline. When it's a joke, just stop where you are and say, now that I think about it, this joke's really not that funny. Or, haven't I told you this one before? and move on. Mind go blank in the middle of a speech. Senior moment, make fun of it. Now this can be a bit more difficult if it's a research product pro project or a technical presentation. Then what you can do is pause, have a sip of water and announce brain fart. It lessens the tension and lightens the momentary lapse with, a, with hilarity. Besides, there are those who find farts of any description funny. A story from your own experience? Just continue on until you do remember where you were. Most people won't be able to tell the difference anyway. Something frowned upon in Toastmasters, but I personally do not care. The experts say, have your notes, your cue cards, and stage reminders ready. Whatever it is you need to resume your place, just handle them with a plum so as not to be obtrusive. Voila, recovery. Critical errors during your presentation. Deviating from your normal winning routine. Preparation and rehearsal. Comparing yourself to others. Here in Toastmasters, we're encouraged to steal shamelessly from other clubs, and that's fine, but beware of trying to mimic someone else's personality or it will come across as disingenuous. Refrain from trying to make a joke or amusing anecdote fit into your story. I kept looking for ways to insert a story from the annals of my past regarding bombing. Although it was and still is funny, it really did not support this message. What did I do? I tabled it for another time. We all know, especially us ladies, what it feels like to shove your foot into an ill-fitting shoe, right? You'll be mad at yourself for wasting money and your toes will hate you. Instead, consider your subject and craft a believable hyperbole, is that an oxymoron? Around it, let your humor blend in and support your message talking points. This not only pertains to Toastmaster presentations, but in every area of your life. Procrastination is not your friend. Do prepare. Don't rely on your personality or your funny material to carry your message or your objective may be lost. 
maintain your uniqueness. In other words, do you. I'm gonna tell you a story of a politician and the country girl. I'm gonna actually refer to my notes so I don't leave anything out of this one. A club that I served in was replete with attorneys, business owners and the like. In the fray was a country girl. She confessed that she felt inadequate in the company of such the greed and learned people. But here was the truth. She was just as brilliant as they were, and then some. But her grammar and her vocabulary skills needed a bit polishing. One club morning, a local political figure came in to me and said, I am so glad you have Missy doing a speech today. I rearranged my schedule when I saw that she was speaking. She always brings something fresh and new. My reply, go tell her. Unless it is inherently dark like mine and another Toastmaster or two whom shall go nameless for now, allow your brand of humor to burst forth. Above all, relax. Don't take yourself too seriously. The barriers of self-consciousness will start to come down and you will begin to have as much fun doing your presentation as others will listening to it. Relax, breathe, pause, bask in the applause. You've just experienced a happy landing. Mr. MC. Thank you very much for that wonderful speech, Stephanie. And we have uh, some time for about two or three questions for our headliner. Who would like to ask the first question? Terry, I am not going to tell you the embarrassing story now, but go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask it now. Um, what I was curious about is you, you, you mentioned dark humor, and I'm wondering, is dark humor ever appropriate to include in your speech? Depends on the audience. If you're talking to people who have similar personalities or similar brands of humor, the macabre and such, yeah, why not? Okay. Okay. We Anybody? Have Go ahead. We I'd like somebody. to hear someone else's thought on that. Yeah, someone we have who would a say. More, uh, a couple more, Stephanie. Okay. Who? 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 Who's there? Who? Uh, Akeem got his hand raised. Akeem. Well, my thoughts on the dark humor is because I am one of those people, I'll go ahead and name myself. I love dark humor. It does something for my soul. Probably not good things, but it does something for my soul. I do find that you can insert a dark humor joke in with people that aren't fans of dark humor as long as it's not, like Stephanie said, offensive. Knowing your audience is a big part of that. What if, Stephanie, you don't necessarily know fully who your audience is going to be. You might know what group you're talking to, but you don't know much about them. Would you say to still stay clear of the dark humor? Be honest, I would. I would. But but then I walk with a whole bunch of safety nets and things such. That's how I do my tight work. Two feet off the ground with a bunch of safety nets. <laughs> Anyone else? We have time for one more. One more? Anybody? Yeah. That's it? Thank you kindly for indulging me. You're not going to tell us that story, are you? Next time. It's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole, nother, a whole nother. I know that's improper grammar, but it's a whole nother speech. <laughs> Thank All you, right. Stephanie. Can't wait. Everybody give Stephanie a round of applause. Thank you.